the fat paramotor guy builds an aeroplane. Good afternoon again chubby puppies what we've been doing let me show you this that's the KFA Safari manual uh, doesn't come like this it comes as a PDF document but um, I had it all printed out and bound and things uh, not too bad only cost a few quid well, about 15 or 16 but um, that's the fuselage manual that's what we're working on at the moment as you know so what have we been doing? So last time I spoke to you, what did we do? Oh, we kind of primed the um, uh, the angled section, uh, aluminium quadrant, as I've been told uh, by my boss at work. That's embarrassing. Uh, but the alley quadrant, anyway, we'd, we'd primed it. We'd used etch primer. Uh, I, the next stage then was to actually paint it. I've painted it a satin black using uh, two pack paint. I've got all the equipment, got the uh, the mask and the goggles. You've got to have the right gear when you spray this two-pack stuff. Test the mask. Make sure it works. Good goggles, keep it out your eyes. Full of that hardness stuff, gets on your lungs, sets rock solid. Lungs don't work well when they're stiff. Anyway, gonna do some spraying. It's got the spray booth, uh, got the spray gun, uh, which is the Devilbis. Uh, FLG5 I believe it is which is a, an entry-level gun uh, well it's an entry-level professional gun um, so it is pretty uh, a pretty good piece of equipment has good reviews and I've used that and sprayed um, the Ali Quadrant uh, two-pack satin black well there they are drying in the Sun on the bin they've already kind of dried Stuck them on there now just to harden them up in this blistering 40 degrees of heat in the UK. Loving it. Little raptor. The next job was to, to rivet those into place. But before I riveted them, I dry fitted them, of course, with the uh, Clecos and uh, then rivet my rivet. Um, decided to to fasten that in permanently on on each rivet because I drilled through into the steel frame uh, and no doubt there's some burrs under the steel frame and some exposure to to moisture and damp I put a little bit of silicon sealant on each of the rivets so that when we pop the rivets into place um, it kind of spread a bit of silicon on there uh, which is pretty useful and uh, also good because a little bit of bedding underneath the rivet rivets are pretty pretty useful on frames uh, that are prone to twist etc uh, because rivets are more flexible and uh, they uh, having that little bit of sealant in there helps with that too uh, that stops fatigue uh, at joints where the rivets are in addition to that 
we remember we kind of fitted the floorboards that go underneath the feet uh, in the cockpit I had to find a material to cover those with the choice is yours doesn't come with a kit I have to decide myself what I wanted to cover it with could have used carpet uh, could have used plastic could have used all sorts of things I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to use carpet I was convinced I didn't because uh, the problem with carpet is it's all very nice when it's new but you know from cars when you've got your feet in there a lot you tend to get a lot of wearing of, of the pile and looks great when new but can look fatigued shortly afterwards and I could always choose to fit some carpets on top of whatever I, I put in there some temporary carpets so uh, I decided to use a rubber coating well I ordered this from Amazon I'll stick the link down below and it's just one mil thick uh, rubber sheeting now, in retrospect, after fitting it, I do wonder whether I should have gone for the 2mm. It's quite thin, it's a little bit stretchy. Uh, I don't know whether over time this too is going to fatigue and I'm going to end up uh, wearing through the holes. You remember the, the actual floorboarding itself has got all these holes cut into it to, to make it lighter. And I'm not sure whether the constant pressure of your feet on the rubber over those holes is going to start cutting a hole through the rubber. Uh, we shall see I did wonder about the two millimeter you can have three millimeter but it's all adding weight and you know I want to try and keep the weight down as much as I can particularly because you know this fat pilot isn't so light himself and every kilogram I can uh, keep away from the build is an extra kilogram of snap that I can eat so and that's what we did I uh, fastened the rubber on with uh, an, uh, with a contact adhesive. I used uh, this branded stuff. It had great reviews. Bought that from Amazon. Uh, in retrospect, I don't rate this stuff as, as much as some of the reviews on Amazon do. Uh, it does stick well. Works very, very well. Uh, it's a reputable company, but... Uh, I've used contact adhesives before, particularly when I renovated a boat that I owned several years ago. And when I did on that renovation, we had to stick up a load of headlinings, you know, throughout the cabins and stuff, the sort of foam backed vinyl headlinings. And the uh, shipwright who uh, sold me the linings advised me on using a particular contact adhesive that I bought. I bought a big five gallon drawing this stuff it was quite expensive for about 50 quid i forget the name of it i really will have to go through bits and pieces but this contact adhesive was much better and the reason it was better was that uh it was quite liquid quite thin and when you spread it on it, it remained thin the problem with this contact adhesive that i've got here i don't know whether it's because uh the weather's quite warm or whether it just dries too quick but you'd start painting it on and uh, it would spread nice and thin but within 30 seconds if you went over it it got very gloopy and thick and it became quite lumpy uh, as I was spreading it on and the lumps you can kind of appreciate underneath the rubber it's not a problem it, it, it aesthetically doesn't make hardly any difference but um, it did dry a little bit too quick and I think I would have preferred to have a nice thin even coating uh, on the wood and on the rubber uh, allowed those to dry and then uh, stuck them together and I think things would have been a little bit flatter so when I glued the rubbers onto here I used the Evo stick um, that stuff there and get good ratings the problem is it's lumpy stuff it's it, it goes off too quick and when it goes off and you try and spread it around it spreads lumps around and um it created a little bit of an uneven finish on the rubber the rubber is only thin to keep it light i mean it doesn't matter it's on the floor it's out of the way um but uh it's still uh, not a big problem, but in retrospect now, something that dries a little bit slower. And the other stuff did, um, although it, it it still became very, very tacky within 20 to 30 minutes uh, and was a very strong uh, adhesive bond. 
So that's my moans and groans about that contact ad adhesive. I'll I'll see in another video perhaps. I'll I'll have a look and see if I can remember what the uh, this other stuff was. Uh, I also learning on that lesson when it came to the floorboards in the back. Uh, those are the boards that go underneath the uh, in the luggage bay. I thought I'd learn another one of these lessons from the past with the boat. So what happened with the boat is when you fitted the uh, the foam back lining, you only use contact adhesive on one surface um, or the, the liquid stuff that was brushed on. And then on the other surface, we had this spray um, and this was called trade tack and it sprayed kind of a fine webbing. So contact adhesive um, or the liquid side on one side and the spray on the other. Uh, and this worked really, really well. So when I decided to stick the carpet that I decided to use for the luggage bay, um, I decided to use that technique and it, it was better. So when I'm doing the rear floorboards, I'm covering them with this carpet and I've Evo sticked uh, the back of here, but I'm going to use this on the wood. I've used this before um, because it sprays quite fine and quite thin. I first bought this um, for doing the uh, the linings in a boat. It's very good stuff. So hopefully, give it a good shake. Oh fucking hell! Let's just. Uh, Clean the nozzle. There we go. We should have tested it first to clean the nozzle. So it kind of does this webbing. Can you see? That's in spider webs. So clever stuff. Kind of does this web like arrangement. So then hopefully we should be able to stick it on. I'm just gonna clean some of the webbing off here and then uh, we'll stick it on. to that chubby puppies coming along it's the back one to do now um, on these edges I've ordered some uh, some very thin foam tape I'm just gonna put some foam tape on there just to um, stop chafing and bouncing I don't know whether it's too much but uh, have done will do um, see you soon So the floors are in, that's uh, carpeted. They've been two pack sealed, two pack clear coat. So clear coat seal on the wood. And then um, we've contact adhesived this carpet down. It's quite lightweight, uh, this carpet bought. It's quite stiff and thick, but quite light as well. It was cheap, cheap carpet. Seems like cheap carpet's your friend when it comes to lightweight. Uh, there's the front, as I showed earlier, um, that's been put in. Okay, that's rubber. That's kind of a rubber surface. You can see all the dust and fluff it's picking up. So, look, finishing touches, and we're probably a year away. God knows how long it'll take. There we are. Um, I think we're gonna have a bit of angle or something in the middle here, just to stop things from sliding around. Uh, and then here we'll probably have some netting, separate two compartments. Um, I'm gonna have this as a, as a back that you can reach from the cockpit and this one uh, comes through the, the luggage bay door there. So that's the idea, looking good. 
So two jobs then the, that I've finished and I've smashed through is I have finished the floor uh, in the cockpit, uh, finished the coating of that, and I've also uh, finished the luggage bay. Um, and you can see that's that's looking pretty good already. So in the meanwhile, thank you again for watching these videos. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see a KFA Safari already built and flying, check out Thomas Marrow's yeah, it's up there. His YouTube channel I'll stick up there. Thomas uh, has been around a bit long with the KFAs. Uh, he's a friend of the guy who owns KFA Safari. He's got a fantastic vlog uh, flying the KFA Safari around South Africa, which is a beautiful part of the country. I think they're out there at the moment looking at uh, elephants and giraffe and, and such like. Uh, but check out his channel. You can check out this aeroplane uh, in all its beauty uh, being flown around. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, subscribe ship that's quite useful hit the bell icon that way you'll get notifications and in the meanwhile thank you for watching it's a bit windy bye for now